Good morning. I'm excited to talk to you today. This is a great topic. I've been pondering on one of the recent conference talks and feeling that this is just great material to cover. Just great material. It's called The Plan, the Plan of Happiness by Boyd K. Packer. He says, The end of all activity in the church is to see that a man and a woman with their children are happy at home, sealed for eternity. One of the things I really like about Boyd K. Packer is his courage, his courage and his, and his willingness to take on topics that are sometimes taboo and therefore difficult to talk about as members of the Latter-day Saint Church. So, it's a great opportunity for us. He talks about a great deal about kind of the drives, the feelings, the powers behind procreation, and he does so very upfront, very honest, and yet very tastefully. I remember as a little kid getting a little lecture on sex from my grandma. I was five, I remember we were outside on the, on the front sidewalk and uh, I did something she didn't like and my grandmother was talking to me about how if people do this or do that with their body, they're going to purgatory and those things are bad and those things are dirty. Now I don't know what I did, I'm, I'm not totally sure as a little kid, but I thought then that things related to the intimate side of the body meant going to purgatory, which if you're not familiar, that's, that's not, it's not, it's not quite hell, but it's kind of like it. It's kind of that in-between place for Catholics, which is how I grew up before I joined the church. That and many other messages over the years, both inside, the, inside and outside of the church, have come that, that led me to believe for a lot of years that intimate feelings, uh, sexual feelings, attractions and desires and all those things were all bad. Bad before marriage, bad after marriage. You may feel differently. Maybe you're great and have great attitudes, but because a lot of people are up with these taboos and these mistaken conceptions, I really wanted to use uh, Boyd K. Packer's talks here, excuse me, Boyd, Boyd, K., Boyd K. Packer's talk here to clarify some things because he speaks so clearly on the subject. Over the years, I have frequently taught an important principle, he says, the end of all activity in the church is to see that a man and a woman with their children are happy at home, sealed together for time and all eternity. And he says, the power, jumping ahead, the power of procreation is not an incremental part of the plan. It is the plan of happiness. It is the key to happiness. Now, you may be thinking, like initially came to my mind, uh, the thoughts and the discussions that used to come up uh, in the church back in the 80s, maybe the 90s as well, where feeling that I got as I heard about this intimate topic, sexuality and procreation, was that sex is okay for kids, and maybe it's okay for husbands and wives to enjoy, but it's mostly for kids. It's mostly so you can have children, I mean. That's mostly it. And I don't, that's, I'm not saying that was the official, but I'm saying that's the feeling that I received in those days. So let's see how he frames it. Where's he at on this issue? The desire to mate in humankind is constant and very strong. Okay, so just that, that, just having an apostle acknowledge that, that validates a lot of feelings. For a long time, as a teenager, I thought, oh man, I've got these strong desires, these strong urges, continued on through college and after marriage and so on and so forth, and I wondered, is that wrong? Now, to, to, to preface this, he talks before about how God created man, God created woman and the earth, and so on and so forth. All these things were good. And he puts this in this context where we realize that the desire, as he says, to mate in humankind is constant and very strong. Our happiness in mortal life, our joy and exaltation, are dependent upon how we respond to these persistent, compelling physical desires. Our happiness rests on it. He's not saying like in the old days, oh, this is just, you just have sex so you can have children. 
and you know if you have sex here and there as as a married couple it's okay you got it if you have fun now and then but it's mostly for children he's not saying that our happiness in mortal life is dependent on how we respond to these persistent compelling physical desires powerful powerful stuff so let's take a moment here a little bit i want you to just turn inside turn inward a little bit to your own thoughts what do you think about this where are you at as an lds person where are you at with sexuality is it good in marriage is it good is it bad do you have some taboo feelings about it do you have some feelings like nope it's great i don't know why we're talking about this where's my wife where's my husband let's uh you know anyway or maybe you feel so ashamed so embarrassed that you can't even talk about this we should you're, th you're thinking i can't believe that somebody's even talking about this just take a moment and see where you're at those feelings we want to honor your feelings and you know where you're at is where you're at i respect that so now i want to, he talks about and i want to go into this he's going to talk about how um you know it's not procreation is not just about having children he says ideally mating begins with romance though customs may vary it flourishes with all the storybook feelings of excitement and anticipation there are even sometimes rejection there are moonlight and roses love songs poetry the holding of hands and the expression of affection between a young man and a young woman the world disappears around the couple and they experience feelings of joy awesome awesome he's saying those things are, those feelings are good he, someone is an, an apostle is acknowledging that all those things are good right obviously within the bonds of marriage right sex and within marriage that's what we teach what we believe I strongly believe that have a testimony of it the law of chastity is very important but there's this positive side of the law of chastity that sometimes we don't talk about that's what we're talking about now how the law of chastity has all these positive impacts and positive approaches within the bounds of marriage when entered into worthily he says now he's talking basically about sex in uh, marriage when entered into worthily this process combines the most exquisite and exalted physical emotional and spiritual feelings associated with the word love oh, right again not just saying sex is for having children most exquisite exalted spiritual physical emotional feelings associated with the word love he's saying it's a good thing in marriage it's an important part of marriage the excitement of it playing constant desires of it uh, they're all there and they're all okay within marriage how do you feel about that now if you're saying if you're if your mind's saying yeah i get it and your emotions are saying no 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 this is evil this is bad we can't talk about sex and it's always bad in marriage then i want you to just stop for a second and question that belief here an apostle of the lord has just said god made man put into man and woman these strong desires and they're part of having a, a great life filled with love saying and so if our feelings are telling us no these desires are bad no my body the intimate parts of my body they're bad or they're not enough those feelings and they're okay but those feelings now conflict with what we've been taught god made man god made woman made the whole creation and in moses he says it was very good right he created he says it was very good our bodies are very good the way we make children is very good the way husband and wives husbands and wives express physical love and romantic love very right when done within the bounds the lord has said so if your feelings are in conflict with this that's okay but know that those teachings aren't necessarily from the lord of the church the apostle speaking it's awesome 
he clarifies that our feelings are good. Now I just want to wrap this up. Thank you very much for listening. We're kind of in the middle of this, but I don't want to delve into too much more doctrine. I just want to process this. I want to give you time to process this. It's amazing, right? You might, this might be the first time you're realizing, maybe. I remember, for me, the first time that I realized all these things that I thought were bad about myself weren't, aren't bad about myself. And, and the belief for me didn't go away immediately. I didn't read the church doctrine or the Old Testament, you know, about the creation and immediately say, oh, yeah, it's all good. It's good. Yeah, it's good. No. It's taken belief that the body that God gives us with its powers and its feelings, <laughs> and all those feelings, they are actually normal and good and acceptable before the Lord. So if it takes you a while to process, I get it. Thank you very much for listening. We'll see you back here. Good morning. I'm excited to talk to you today.